Peace, peace. Been a minute. <sighs> I'm just gonna dive right into this. You know, um, let's give honor to source, um, to the creator. I'm um, just to dive right into this and start by saying, like, um, being very authentic with this right here is, um, as a, as a man who has, you know, really, well, currently on this like healing journeys, you know, self-love journey, self-discovery, self-awareness, whatever you want to call it, the spiritual journey, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of things that could, one of the most uh, things that really hit me today is that um, I came across something that really highlighted a lot of what I really feel like caused a lot of suffering in my life. And this could probably help a lot of people wherever you are on your journey, especially a lot of men. You know, we have our shortcomings. We experience, uh, you know, day-to-day -day routine. And sometimes don't even realize how much we have been repressing or have repressed. And through that process, you know, there's a process of, you know, what we call letting go. That's not the easiest thing. You know, I recently created, did a, did a video or a podcast about talking about, you know, grieving the ones that you love, even if they're physically here. So sometimes it's not always just grief isn't always going through a process of someone transitioning and leaving the physical body, you know, a death. It's also the grieving process of the fantasy, this character or this person that we have created in our mind, you know, this, this holding, you know, our mother and our father or, you know, someone near and dear to us at this higher standard than ourselves. And, you know, I came across something talking about that, like someone, I think it was in the video, how she mentioned like how, you know, how do you mend a relationship with your mother? And for those that don't know, again, like I've had to personally go no contact or personally distance myself and remove myself from environments and people that no longer serve me or what I'm currently creating or involved in. So with that process, um, there comes a grieving. And um, one of the most challenging things is that I had to really accept. Sometimes we, we don't even realize that we haven't accepted this, is that have we really accepted um, grieving over, you know, let's say a, a, a caregiver or someone who's still physically here, but have we really grieved over or accepted that caregiver that we wish we had? And when I say about that, it's like, it really hit me and I, I really, like I, I started crying because it was, it was really what it was. I could not ignore it as a man, but I encourage you just like, again, one thing about honoring our emotions and healing is that um, navigating trauma will allow those memories and re whether repressed, you know, things, memories and so forth to come up for us to acknowledge as men. And what it allows me to do is that those repressed things, you know, that, that grieving allow those repressed emotions and memories from my childhood to come up and to be able to address it within myself and to be able to see how it has affected not only my relationship with myself, but my relationship with others um, and other women, especially. So what I come to the realization about is I had to give myself permission to really grieve over the mother that I wish I had. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that again. Grieve over the mother that I wish I had. That has been one of the most challenging things because again, from those that have seen my videos and I talk about, you know, this healing journey, spiritual journey and so forth, 
when it comes to facing generational traumas and breaking generational curses and chains, for me to become who I'm striving to be, whether show up daily and navigating, you know, um, my own emotions, taking full responsibility, taking accountability of my own life, that has a lot to do with the pain or certain things I experienced in the past. So with that, I I can say to myself that I had this idea or created this 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 mother in my mind, in my heart, and so forth that did not exist. How many of us, you know, you know that falling in love with potential or that potential of someone getting better or the hope of them really changing? And this this not to discredit anyone, but how much of us have held that to a higher standard? Than really focusing on our own well-being, our own selves, our own traumas, our own parts of ourselves that we have neglected. And see, learning what I repress and coming to know, you know, this repressed, you know, learning what repressed emotions, learning how much how childhood traumas have affected my life and navigating through that is there was a part of me that wanted to hold on to the idea so much that this person is going to change. Or even I wish I had a mother that could have done that. You know, I used to see television programming or see other families that you will see the love, you will see the nurturing displayed. You know, when, you, when I was younger, I would see how mother would love on her son. I would see how even... Even presently, how a mother would love on, you know, recently I went to the gym, seeing how a mother would love on her son, which I thought, you know, sometimes I program and we were, well, I would assume like, you know, there was a man in there working out. And his mother was there and um, she was still, I think he was on the gym running and stuff. Well, on the treadmill thing. And, um, you know, he was more focused on like, you know, don't distract me, yada, yada, yada. And I made a joke within myself, like, dang, I don't know if I can be in the gym with my mom, you know, she be in there. But I asked myself, why did I, why did I come to that conclusion or why I couldn't do that? And a lot of, again, how we go through these experiences or how we judge these experiences before they even happen or, you know, a lot of that comes with a lot of things we we experienced in our childhood. So I automatically judge the situation, but you know, his mom, as she was departing, he was sweating. She went and got napkins and she was about to dab his head. But you know, here it is, you know, we as men, he's like looking like, you know, just leave me alone, I'm working out. But deep down, a part of me knew that that's something that I wish I had. And so going back to where I am currently, again, this is not everyone's situation, but my current situation of having to heal from the relationship, having to grieve the mother I wish I had. The mother that, um, and what this does, it, it, it allows again to possibly rebuild a relationship. But again, from the grieving not only happens when, and what I mean by that, it's like literally having like, um, I, I had notes, you know, like a home going, a home going celebration or a funeral in our hearts of this idea of what we wish our mother and father could have been, you know, whomever this is relationships, you know, but most importantly for me, it really, it really to the root of it. When, it, when I'm talking about the mother wound, it really hit home for me because um, there were things I wish my mother would have been supportive of. And trying to navigate trauma, that I can honestly say affected so much of my relationships to now where I realize my role. And see that past, that, that version of myself where the pain was and all that rage that affected my past relationships with women I realized like I did not even in the process which I don't regret or feel shameful for now had I known what I've known then I would have already um, learned to 
you know, accept that, um, accept and let go of that, that, that fantasy of a mom that I wish I had and or father. And so, um, sometimes we don't even realize subconsciously what we have experienced until like it really shows up and seeing much, seeing how much like I was enabled young to believe that all women were supposed to be like my mother or to even, you know, to take on that narrative again. This is how we as kids, when we were innocent, when we could not defend ourselves, when we, you know, got spankings or, you know, the projection, you know, and so forth. Those are the parts that, again, that currently in letting go of that relationship and, you know, burying in a sense of like that idea, that fantasy of what I felt the mother I came through should have been. It doesn't exist. I had to really realize like it doesn't exist. Because the reality and the actuality is that you see the person in their current state. And that cannot be ignored. But in our minds and again in our hearts, we've convinced ourselves. And this is where I can see the suffering or how the emotional connection to where we as, you know, into our adulthood believe that um, or accept that. A lot of our mothers and caregivers, you know, what what type of um, what type of nourishment or nurturing nurturing did we really receive? And I know from my own experience, I can no longer, I will not, you know, ignore that. So I'm having to now at 34, accept, embrace, and currently in that grieving place of literally burying that idea, that fantasy, um, that potential of, you know, the mother I wish I had. And it's, it's, I want, I would, I can say it's hurtful. The reason why I would say it's hurtful and painful is because of what I experienced with her in my childhood. Now, going, transitioning this allows that that rage and that anger and those things that come up to where I can be honest with myself. I can be authentic with myself to, to be able to show up for myself now, to be able to allow those wounds to turn into scars, to allow those wounds to heal, to allow those wounds to, to, to redefine myself through those wounds. So, um, because at a point in time, I let those wounds define my character. I let those wounds of what I experienced with my mother define who I was as a, as a man. And so if I don't bury that version of what I wish I could have had, then how could I, you know, as a man show up for myself, you know, you know, the, my kids, your part, you know, my part, you know, anything. Just, you know, e even in partnerships, business shit with women, you know, there's a lot to do with what um, cannot, you know, no longer be ignored because that's the thing that the silence in itself, when you know there's a raging storm within you that has to be talked about, that has to be shared. And that grieving stage can be, can have a lot of emotion, you know, emotions to deal with. And, you know, are you willing, you know, I had to be willing to go to the depths of that and accept it. Um, you know, the moments where I felt like I should have been nurtured, I, I should have been treated better. And um, that that whole, that whole process again allows me to redefine myself and what I'm currently doing, speaking out about it, sharing and so forth and connecting with women 
you know, on a business partnership and so forth. Even little girls like on a relationship to where, again, all these things mirror the the all those interactions can mirror the unhealthy part of ourselves and seeing if we're willing to the shadow part of ourselves and being able to face to be being able to become and embrace our healthy aspect of ourselves that's why again i don't feel shame and guilt in now taking the initiative and enabling and embracing the healthy version of myself no matter and i'm able to recognize the woundedness or unhealthiness in other people whether it be feminine or masculine energy you know i'm able to see it within men who again me telling my part is that have we really let go and are we still holding on because i've seen this from experience from men in my family it's like they haven't let go or they don't know how to let go of that that pain because there's this idea of like you know honor their mother and father or and in reality what have they did that's honorable it's not to say what they've done isn't you know great or to the best of their abilities but no longer ignoring the signs of what is no longer serving you as a man or a woman what no longer is in alignment with who you are and who you're becoming so a part of you is not only grieving what potentially could be or the fantasy of this idea of mama that's still my mom the growth really truly comes in is where you also are grieving a part of yourself that no longer causes that suffering or that 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 attachment that selfish attachment on their part as well and this is where i've learned that as you start to be more to show up for yourself and engage more with who you are and the versions of yourself and love parts of yourself you'll be able to see the selfish attachments and the shadows of other people who want to hold on to the selfish attachment of you being their son their daughter um wherever you know all in all realms of things to where again you're taking back your power but you're also letting go of something that you know that will bring you peace and will bring you a peace you know where you're not raging war within yourself anymore so um it, it, it's it's man let me tell you something um we don't have to wait around for someone to really leave this world you know physically to really um to really grieve over what we really need to let go currently and to, and, and continue depriving ourselves of the love of the reciprocity of the respect of all those things that we know that we are capable of or know that we are deserving of and that starts with you nobody else and that's one thing i'm realizing is so important just on this journey is that it really does start with me the relationships um being a captain of my own ship it's like that that's how i look at it the relation relation and ship you know i'm the captain of my own ship i choose what i want to enable or initiate instead of allowing others to choose that and reflecting on that dynamic even to now and presently with who's who's in my life i realized what i was so much uh at that moment consumed by and have we really had i really allowed myself to really um like have a funeral or like a, a like a, a, a home going celebration of what really no longer serves me, whether that be people knowing that, you know, how much I'm going to keep convincing myself that this really doesn't exist. Is this really going to change, you know? And so um, I kind of just wanted to share that with y'all because again, it's like, it's, it really hit home because I it, it shows me like I don't have to ever keep neglecting those parts of myself for something that really doesn't exist. 
because we want so so much of people to change, people to um, go with us, walk with us through these doors, go with us and celebrate us. But if we don't let go and allow ourselves to grieve, how, there's no duration on that. Like I'm giving myself, finally giving myself the grace to grieve, giving myself the self-compassion to allow myself to um, allow that emotion to show up in my body too, because that's what I'm also learning too. It's like, you know, you can cry and immediately after that, you can either feel lighter or you can feel like a sense of like exhaustion. Is that the word? Yeah, exhausted or whatever or tired, you know, something to where like that, that energy, that emotion, whatever it is, has been built up, has been repressed so long. And um, again, a lot of memories, things that I wanted to ignore have come up. And that also brings awareness to how I treated myself and how I treated others. From not realizing how much, um, uh, things I repressed throughout the years, the rage, um, the sexual addiction, the sexual neglect, uh, the abuse in a way. Um, you know, that's a lot of things I can go like really um, elaborate on when it comes to, uh, especially, you know, letting you know those, you know, women that what really men aren't really saying. And it's just not, attack on anybody because I'm not going to be like just talk about stuff like that it's just really giving you insight or sharing my own personal experience because it's needed I know how much it's needed right now because we have again a lot of us through so many things have repressed so much to where we really haven't allowed ourselves to um, grieve over you know the mother and father or caregivers or relation, you know, a lot of things that connect us to really showing up for ourselves. So that, that has been a process for me daily to get up and to realize like, Hey, some days I don't know where the emotion comes from. Some days the memories come up, some things, things resurface and you're like, hold on. Did I really face this? Am I going to lie to myself and be like, Oh yeah, I'm all healed. Or, or I've accepted all things. And in actuality, men, ourselves, we've, we've have, it's not that, you know, our women haven't repressed things. I feel we just do it differently. We haven't been in a society that really uh, encourage us to be, you know, expressive. And again, I've talked about how we really haven't had a, a safe place and depending on who we grew up with, and if we had unhealthy women in our lives, then, you know, um, I saw a video early where, you know, this sister was saying like, um, you know, you need to go back to the pain of what you experienced in the past. You know, when your mother, you know, not, and I can speak on my experience, when your mother slapped you and she told you to shut up, you know, don't cry. And that in itself is teaching you to repress your emotions. That right there is teaching you that, you know, are your emotions important and valid? So that immediately, here it is someone that, again, we look to these people as our, or have looked to these people in our past as um, have, have held them to a higher standard more than ourselves. Haven't really, um, you know, and that's what's being restored within us as men and women. Um, that's the healing that's happening internally is that we haven't been told, you know, through the people that we want to hear from the most. And so that's why I'm talking about the whole, you know, grieving over the caregivers we wish we really had that could have shown us what it was to be emotionally secure, emotionally intelligent, to be in tune, to love ourselves, to honor ourselves as men and women. And now here we are. And I don't want to say damaged, but now trying to recover from all those things, you know, it's a daily process, you know, trying to block out the judgment and the criticism and the projections of the world and people really not knowing what we're going through internally. You know, 
me myself no longer masking myself just trying to be as authentic as possible not i'm not gonna be out here trying to fool myself to nobody i don't care if someone believes it i don't need no one's approval again i know myself from my own experiences what makes me more what what makes me now well now seeing of my my value is the the beauty of it is that i i know now what what and who reflected in that moment in my childhood who devalued me or who did not see their own value so being that we have environments or having grown up in environments or still currently coming out of you know the rubble and coming out of you know uh, rising from the ashes of everything that should have destroyed us as men i'm speaking from men everything that should have destroyed us and I don't just mean just by the color of our skin. I'm talking about things internally, spiritual warfare, things that we go through, again, that has affected us as men. And to even show up daily and to be told you shouldn't be angry by the world. You shouldn't be, you know, express yourself. And then just now trying to find a safe place. You know, a lot, you know, us growing up in environments again where, you know, I recently saw someone that, uh, you know, you're working out and stuff and you're just seeing stuff that reflected your childhood and it brings up memories when you're seeing people argue in a place where you're just trying to work out. Or you... And so, again, as much as we, we think we can hide and run from ourselves, there is a thing that's daily when it really the focus has to be peace is that that's one of the most valuable things I realized that. Um really appreciating more than anything right now is that being at peace with what has happened is happening and will happen and so again environments where now we're feeling secure within ourselves safe within ourselves to come here because i'm not going to sit and say oh i can have this conversation with a mother or auntie or you know certain people is that possible? Yes. Currently, you you have to, you know, let, let I this, uh, uh, like the reality is that this is a world or environment that is going through a huge transition. People that are really purging, people that are really realizing how much we all have repressed so much, how much we all have been affected by so much. And, um, we're now again feeling safe to where we, you know, there, there's been a point to where I had to regain trust within myself and women because so many things I experienced. So, you know, me coming on this platform or coming on certain places is a part of that to where I can express it without argument. I can express this without any type of judgment. You know, I don't care about anybody else that could comment. I don't know them from a can of paint. But from the, the more um, personal experiences. And so it's a healthy balance when, you know, we as men now are also um, knowing our worth and coming back into who we truly are and in balance with ourselves. And most importantly, seeing our role in, in accepting that accountability. You know, it doesn't, and it, it isn't just what we've experienced or, you know, not just what we experienced, but who we experienced it with. And so it, it, it's a challenge, but at the same moment, it's so worth it. So, um, again, I, I really had to share that because, again, before I got on here, I had a moment to where I had to really purge and let that out because, um, I really held on tight to the idea, which I realized was hindering myself. I, no one was blocking me. My mom, nobody was keeping me from being who I am. I realized how much within myself that I had to go in and realize from that mother wound and now to be able to see the balance between the wounded and that the unhealthy woman and the healthy woman to now see my role from my experience with women to become, to see my unhealthy 
parts as a man to see the healthy part that I'm becoming. And so it's like, it's so easy to judge and criticize people no matter where they are currently in their life. But we don't know, really know the vices. We don't know what they're currently trying to come out of or getting through or even try to make it out. So um, I really had to share that with y'all when it comes to like um, the, the, the grieving, the, you know, that aspect. You know that again that that fantasy mother and father you know because we've been so programmed because look at social media you look at even how people are even portraying and sometimes they unconsciously don't even know it that you know they're portraying to the world on social media now or to anyone because I've, I've let me tell you something i almost got caught up in that thinking that i gotta why well, i need to post this or put, and this don't have nothing to do with the child or have nothing to do Am I doing this from a place of my own woundedness? Am I doing this from a place of, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but from my lens, seeing the corruption in majority, like let's be real, seeing people who are trying to prove the that they are a great parent or that they are you know, a great caregiver and so forth. And not knowing, cause some people not, they don't know. And unknowingly, like, you know, subconscious seeing how that can connect to some type of, you know, their childhood wounding or their wounds being preyed upon by their caregiver. And, you know, sometimes we can fall victim to that because we don't even realize how much of an influence, like, are we influencing others, enabling others to do this? Or seeing the corruption around all that social media stuff or certain things that highlights that that again to the world everybody wants to be seen as oh i'm you know as authentic but behind closed doors or anywhere else it's the opposite so that being said it's like we all have shortcomings we all have skeletons but i'm not at all gonna be sitting here trying to portray the perfection into no fucking body then why i be coming up here sharing this because like let me tell you something it has been a process. Again, the peace is more vital than anything that I, I realize now. Um, because I've seen the people with all these things to where they still didn't really know how to have the emotional intelligence or really know what it really is to be secure, no matter how much they had materialistically. But again, from the social medias and certain things, are you being influenced by it or are you the influencer and who's enabling you to try to keep up with the Joneses? You know, and, and like I said, to each his own, what people do, it's more so like, again, I tell myself like, yo, if I don't be real with myself, why the fuck would I get on here and try to paint this picture? I saw this stuff years ago, yo. I didn't even know I was gonna get into this, but I saw this years ago, like, you know how they had this thing trending with the so-called families would get on there and do pranks, you know, and this is not everyone, but again, a hey, hit dog or holler. <laughs> but, you know, just, I, I would see things years ago to observe, to be like, wow, why are they doing this? You know, the exploiting their kids, exploiting themselves, and not and just see the inauthenticity of the foundation that they was creating and i was like i knew eventually i was like i know this is just gonna crumble and you know the just the, the from the past to now like seeing how to transition from people using their so-called illusion of power to try to one-up other people um you know a lot of this use and abuse behavior and as again we know when you're on this journey and as a, you know, we talk about on a frequency aspect, all that stuff be exposed to shadow, the shadows of ourselves, the shadows of other people, you know, the darkness, which again, everything comes to the light. So that there is really like, I will always encourage people, man, if you don't be real with you, who you going to be real with? Cause you, it's like, I don't care what's portrayed on here. There are people not in your everyday life or you know really whether there's people in your everyday life because everybody don't got everybody around them 
But still, whether you with yourself or you being real with you before you go out there into the world and be something that you know you're not. You know, still, I'm saying, like, are you still holding that authentic, you know, frequency? Um, Or, you know, just, you know, and I will see, you know how you grew up in, in the neighborhood, you see somebody act like one thing and then they get around this person, they flip the script or just turn into a whole nother thing. It's like, what what are we doing here? So, uh, I'm gonna just leave it at that because I got a little appetite right now. Um, I appreciate you all. And um, yeah, I, that that thing really hit me today, man. With the with the with the again, we all most of us have been a, either have a mother wound or a father wound. But have you really, you know, ask yourself, have you really grieved over or let go of the idea, this this fantasy of what you felt your mother and her father or someone should have been? Even if they're here physically, even if they're gone, because you just never know how that is keep hindering you from what you could be. You know, I will hear people talk about that all the time. Well, you know, sometimes they wouldn't say it, but I will hear people like, oh, you know, think about people that, it's not everybody, um, that, you know how I used to hear them talk like, oh, my, my grandmother was a a, a, a a doctor or this person was this or this person was that and I'm going to be the same thing and da, da, da. You know, that's all this pressure around, you know, this caregiver or this person pushing that, you know, forcing that onto them. And then that child really getting to a place where, even in their so-called failure, what they call or so-called illusion of that, they hard on themselves because their first inner dialogue comes from that caregiver. Their first, you know, voice that they come to know, well, young that they are aware of, is the caregiver or people that have been around them. And that's one thing I realized that I really had to let go of is that that was one of the most challenging things when it came to my mental health, when it came to really, really standing in my own power and taking back my power, is that I don't have to be who you want me to be societally. I don't have to engage or follow the trend. I don't have to do anything I don't feel guided to. And, you know, I, I, I can see that a lot, the pressure around um, and usually you'll see that child or just like me, I will naturally rebel. You will see people rebel eventually, those who have the courage to, and, and seeing the beauty in rebelling. Because again, you are here. I realize this, you are here as a trendsetter or as a co-creator, or as a person who has the power to, and the courage to not only stand in your power, but to create to break the generational chain or cycle or curse or whatever, and to recreate something that's authentic by being true to you, by really, even if it doesn't make sense to nobody else, those ideas, all those things. And that's one thing, again, I had to learn to navigate through my traumas, my emotions, my life experiences where, you know, did I, was I more concerned about you know, would I be enough if I didn't do this, if I didn't go this route and so forth? And I realized a lot of that reflected a lot with the environments, with the people, societally, what was being pushed on the media, so forth. It plays a lot on a man or someone, especially my mind or someone who, if you're getting fed this narrative since you were young through television and so forth, like, oh, you're only good to be this or you, you know, all the stereotypes and so forth. But man, I'm telling you that, that real spiritual currency, that power within you, that, that, um, spiritual wealth and abundance is that there's no limitation to it, to what you can be. And, and, um, that comes with that spiritual abundance is that spiritual peace that, that, that's something within you that no one can take. No one. Now, the power, that, that's the illusion that's been given off. Like, oh, things can be removed. But that all serves its purpose. 
So I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Um, be great. Be who you are. Be you for you. And um, take care of you. How are you gonna show up for you today? You gonna rest? You gonna do something fun? So, yeah. It's okay to um, let go. There's a there's a there's a newer version of you that others may not recognize, but there's a there's a part of you on the other side that is awaiting, and no one knows what that looks like but you. And even on the other side, there are others who also have faced the very not the same things, but they have accepted and went through maybe a similar process to where they'll connect. It'll be there. Peace and blessing. Shalom.